can, what am I, okay. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Paul Zalmazak with the City of Evanston. We're going to give you another minute, and then we'll kick this off, okay? Okay. <clears throat> the old crown is down. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, once again, this is Paul Zalmazak. I uh, represent the city of Evanston as the economic uh, development manager. I uh, appreciate your time and I appreciate close to uh, the, I don't know what our finals, not, final numbers were, but we were up near 200 attendees. This very important uh, webinar to be presented by uh, Stephen Conkle, the SBA, Chicago. Um, before we start off, I want to thank uh, my colleague Katie Bowden for, for working with Stephen to get this scheduled exclusively for Evanston businesses. Um, I'm not going to overdo it here. We, we understand. Uh, we're so sorry for what you're all going through, but let's, let's just work quickly to get these, uh, these loan and grant opportunities um, applied for and, and to get money flowing to you. Um, I understand uh, uh, Mayor Haggerty was going to join the call. I'm not sure if he is with us yet, and if he is, I'd, I'd appreciate if he'd uh, go ahead and um, say a few words, and then we'll kick the webinar off. Great. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is Mayor Steve Haggerty. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, I just wanted to, to take a, a minute and, um, and give you guys just a real quick um, recap of what's going on. I literally just jumped out of another call that's still going on um, with the White House it's mayors from around the country. There's like a thousand mayors on that call, and I'll, I'll give you a quick update on something there. Um, Dr. Fucci did just speak uh, on that call. Uh, at a national level, a state level, and a local level, uh, we are fighting a battle on many fronts. Our number one priority is to work as hard as we can to eliminate the immediate threat to health, life, and safety posed by COVID-19 uh, on all of us. Um, and as everybody knows, it's particularly um, uh, um, difficult for older, older Americans and those with uh, underlying health conditions. So I can't stress enough uh, the importance of practicing very strict social distancing. Uh, Dr. Fucci talked about that. They uh, they believe, again, we got to go through the whole month of April, which I know is difficult for all the business owners, for families, for everybody, um, but it's essential and it's not often for all asked uh, to play a role in a disaster, and this is one where we all are. So I just want to stress that to every, everyone. Secondly, I mentioned this is a, a battle on many fronts. One of them is you know, so doing all we can to try and support families and small businesses uh, throughout this country and here in Evanston that are being severely impacted. Let me be clear, no one is gonna be made whole uh, after this disaster. Everyone is impacted by it. Some people, uh, including all of you on this call, are impacted more uh, than others and our low income residents are particularly hit hard by this. Um, I am in conference calls constantly again, and I can tell you from the governor's office to the folks in Washington to our, our legislators here locally and at the state level, they are all working hard to try and put programs 
in place. Um, on this call, Larry Kudlow spoke, and uh, I just want to make sure because I think you guys are going to cover it today. Um, there's the Economic Injury Loan, which is a standard program out of the Small Business Administration, which you'll be briefed on today. And I really appreciate uh, Stephen uh, uh, joining us from the SBA. Um, the other one that's new, and again, everything is moving really quickly. They're still trying to put these programs in place and everything, and it can't happen fast enough, uh, but is one that I want you really to pay attention to, which is the payroll retention uh, loan program that they have, which is intended to help uh, prop up the payrolls of businesses so we don't find ourselves, and uh, many of you know me, I have, a small, I have a small business myself and everything else, and I know the uncertainty that everybody's feeling um, uh, is to help with your payroll and you know if certain conditions are met that loan can be partially or fully forgiven so you definitely want to pay attention to that um lastly i just want to want to stress it is very important to me to our economic development team and everybody that the folks here in evanston and in our surrounding community get up to speed as quickly as we can on all of these programs so that A, we understand it, B, we can communicate it to others in the community and C, that we can be you know, towards the front of the line when it comes to applying for this aid. Uh, so that's uh, the intent of the call today to get everybody on the line again with, a, with an expert from the SBA so we can start that. Um, I also would just suggest, and I mentioned this at a task force meeting yesterday, that uh, there are going to be so many different programs, and again, the rules are just being put in place around these, that creating study groups within our community focused on different aspects and then being able to communicate you know, the facts to other people would be really valuable. So uh, I'll let people run with that who, who uh, can. I think it's important that our partners in this whole thing when it comes to these new rules and programs are banks, they're law firms, they're accounting firms, and we need them to all be able to, to help all of us business owners. So um, uh, hang, in, hang in there. Please follow and practice strict social distancing, even on nice days when it's out there. You, you can get out and go for a walk, but you've got to practice it, and we'll get our hands uh, around, this, uh, around this virus. I'll leave you with uh, something optimistic that uh, Larry Kudlow just said. He said that for where they sit in Washington, uh, they don't view this as um, um, as having structural damage to the economy. They do believe that once we can flatten the curve, uh, we will gradually get back. And they think that, you know, the, the strong economy that we had before the coronavirus uh, will come back. So that's where they are right now. Uh, so thank you, everybody. And thanks, Paul, for giving me a couple minutes. Bye -bye. You're welcome. Um, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Uh, just a quick heads up. We have approximately 400, excuse me, 400 attendees. So we've got a big crowd today. And I'll kick it off to uh, Stephen Conkle. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you very much, Paul, for inviting me. And I look forward to giving you the, the information on the programs and getting you up to date on them. Uh, I have a little background. I work uh, for the Illinois District Office of the Small Business Administration. I've been an SBA employee for over 20 years, and I worked in the Economic Development Program, the Capital Access Program, and also the Contracting Assistance Program. And I look thank you for the opportunity to come and talk about the what the SBA is doing to help during this uh, current uh, disruption. Uh, we're going to have a PowerPoint here where we're going to start out by going through the economic uh, injury disaster loans. Uh, the first thing we talk about is the process. Uh, the economic injury disaster loan, the reason that uh, we're starting out at, as the first program was that this program has been around, has been part of the SBA uh, for well over 50 years, and it is a program that generally covers two areas, physical disasters and also economic disasters. Uh, I always say folks that live in places like South Florida uh, or uh, out the uh, 
uh, Southern California with the earthquakes or South Florida with the hurricanes are very familiar with this program because this is being used to uh, rehabilitate those areas after the disasters. Now to get the process started, all of, the first step is that the governor of a particular state uh, will have to um, declare a disaster uh, either for the whole state or certain parts of the state as in the case of natural disasters. And then he prepares the declaration and submits it to the Small Business Administration in Washington. We review the uh, request and if it uh, meets the standards, then we go ahead and uh, agree with the declaration and we uh, put an addendum to it indicating that the uh, economic industry or the physical industry disaster program is open for business. Now this particular pro situation is unusual because it's one of the few times in my experience with the agency that the program has been used exclusively for economic injury. Usually, uh, as I referred to hurricanes and earthquakes a minute ago, uh, the program works uh, for a combination of physical uh, disasters and physical injury and economic injury, or like over the weekend, they had these uh, hurricanes and, or I'm sorry, the tornadoes in uh, Arkansas. And that also would be a, a situation where uh, when the governor of Arkansas follows through, uh, we would be doing both a physical disaster and economic injury loans. So this is a working capital loan. The purpose of the loan, the use of the proceeds is to pay day-to-day -day operating expenses of the business. Now, who is, is, who is eligible for the, the program? What do we provide? First of all, eligible entities uh, may qualify for loans up to $2 million. Uh, and that's uh, pretty straightforward as to what is available, what get you. Interest rate for this disaster loan is 3.75% for small businesses and 2.75% for nonprofits. The term is an automatic 30 years. Deferment, uh, the first payment is not due until a year after the loan is fully dispersed. Uh, this gives the uh, uh, borrower an opportunity to use the money to uh, rehabilitate the business uh, or the non-for-profit uh, as necessary. So we give you, a, a, you don't have to start repaying on the loan until a year after uh, you've received the money. Uh, the eligibility, uh, based on the size, this is the standard. So for those of you who are familiar with the SBA 7A program or 504 program, either have worked in it as a banker or uh, been a business owner and have had the, uh, uh, use the program. These are the three criteria you're familiar with, uh, namely the size of the business, the type of the business, and an evaluation of the financial resources that the uh, business has available to it uh, are the three major criteria that determine eligibility. And again, as I say, this is no different from the standard 7A or 504 program that most of you uh, may or may not be familiar with. Uh, on Friday, December 27th, or I'm sorry, March 27th, President Trump signed the CARES Act, which provides uh, additional assistance to small business owners, uh, including the opportunity to receive $10,000 advance on the economic injury disaster loan for emergency capital. Now, one of the things that's happened as a result of this is that the process for applying uh, for the uh, disaster loan uh, changed the beginning of this week. I bring this up because the program, we've been accepting applications under this program for uh, three weeks. And uh, the uh, this advanced feature that is in the, the EIDL uh, loan uh, has necessitated changing the application. Now, uh, what it involves is that you would get an advance um, Let's say, for example, you were talking about a $50,000 loan and your situation was such that you needed $4,000 or $5,000 right away. 
to cover a week's payroll or a month's payroll on a couple of employees, you could get that as an emergency advance. Uh, and it would be, there's a possibility that uh, uh, we will be talking about maybe forgiving that first $5,000 on the $50,000. That's right now in discussion and the final regulations haven't been promulgated yet. Um, the, the, so now, uh, when a business applies under the um, EIDL, you automatically are applying for both the loan and this advance for position. Now, if you applied before last Monday, you should be getting a notification uh, from the uh, disaster center uh, that you're eligible to uh, uh, submit an amended application covering the advance. So you will again have to uh, take care of that uh, when that uh, uh, that situation happens. What types of businesses are eligible to apply? Again, uh, small businesses as measured by our size standards, and I referred to another the goal. Uh, small agricultural uh, cooperatives, uh, these would be uh, organizations in rural areas uh, that either uh, are responsible for uh, selling um, pro, uh, farm products produced by the farmers or on the or, or other side, uh, cooperatives that serve as buying co-ops for the farmers to get information, uh, get uh, supplies for the maintenance of their farms. Um, agriculture businesses, aquaculture businesses, um, yet uh, this is the situation that we would be uh, working with them as well. Private nonprofit organizations. Um, now these are organizations <clears throat> that provide a service to the community. Uh, the uh, uh, standard example we use of this would be like the YMCA or the YWCA uh, or a hospital. Uh, for example, in Evanston, uh, the St. Francis Hospital, because they're uh, run, even though they're owned by a religious organization, they're providing secular services uh, to the community uh, would be available, would possibly be eligible for a program like this. Uh, and again, the, uh, this type of organization, and there's a special way that a nonprofit organization can apply for this particular uh, program, and we'll get into that later. Uh, how we use the loan funds. Keep in mind the role, the purpose of the Economic Injury Develop uh, Disaster Loan Program is to keep the business in operation. Stop debt financing uh, so that the business can continue operating and continue running. So we're talking about fixed debts, things like um, monthly payments on a mortgage, uh, uh, monthly uh, uh, contributions uh, to the uh, employee uh, health plan or employee retirement plan or the wages or the social security accounts payable. Uh, for vendors, uh, things of this sort, any type of uh, monthly expense that, that would be uh, normally paid out of uh, uh, revenue that was generated uh, that can't be paid because uh, the business has been uh, uh, either stopped completely or uh, uh, adversely affected by the particular disaster uh, that occurred. As far as the economic injury disaster loans are concerned, what are the collateral requirements? If the loan amount is under twenty-five thousand, uh, no collateral is, is is required. Now, the SBA takes real estate as collateral, and that uh, let me go in to explain how that works. Uh, if the situation is such where uh, the the example that I will use is that you have a business. Um, that you are in a building that the business owns or that the affiliate is affiliated through the uh, owners of the business own the business to the building individually and lease it to the, to the corporation, things of that sort. Uh, what will happen is that uh, if there's a mortgage on it, uh, we will take a uh, subordinated junior position uh, on the uh, mortgage. Uh, and also, 
if let's say you're talking about a delivery service and you have uh, uh, Ford uh, delivery trucks, you know, like the Ford Transit or Dodge Ram delivery trucks, and you're paying off a loan on those, uh, we, would, uh, we would take a second position behind uh, a Ford Credit or uh, Chrysler Credit or whoever was the first uh, lien holder on those particular vehicles. We would expect that to be part of the collateral for the loan. Now, what they mean is lack of collateral is not uh, a reason for decline. Let's say that you're in a business where you have nothing that uh, can be offered as collateral uh, ownership or that sort of thing. Uh, that will that will not impair your ability uh, to uh, uh, get the SBA loan uh, for this situation. Uh, and so we again we uh, do have. Uh, uh, that uh, particular feature. Uh, also, again, the value of the collateral. Uh, to use an example, let's say that the uh, you get a, a million dollar economic industry disaster loan, but uh, the uh, uh, first mortgage on your building was, let's say, nine hundred thousand uh, dollars. The fact that our uh, collateral position would be subordinated and only worth a hundred thousand dollars would make. It. No difference, we'd still take the collateral anyway. And same way with the delivery trucks and the inventory, uh, whatever else would be available. We would take a subordinate position behind first lien holders, whoever they happen to be. Uh, another area where this particular program is different from the other SBA programs. Uh, again, the, most of the, the 7A of the 504 programs uh, that your express program that you're familiar with, uh, it's a question that the bank is making the loan and the SBA is simply guaranteeing it. It's like uh, we're an insurance company for the bank. We're providing support in case the loan goes into default. Uh, the SBA will pay the, make the bank whole. Uh, so you're dealing almost exclusively and primarily with the bank. In the disaster that's program, even? that's not the case. Uh, in the disaster yeah. program, uh, the SBA is the bank. The U we are the uh, company, the finance company that you're dealing with. Uh, this, we are the ones that you would apply to. We are the ones yeah. that will make the loan. We are the ones that will determine what the loan goes into. There are no costs to apply for it. Uh, it, it's, uh, we'll get into the, uh, the few minutes, we'll get into the application process so there's no real problem to uh, getting around to apply for it. And again, there's uh, no obligation to take the loan if offered. Uh, if you have a situation where, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, your uh, business insurance, uh, interruption insurance covers it, so you really don't need the money uh, from the government, again, there's no problem, no difficulty if you turn the loan down. There's no, nothing will be held against you. Uh, the last bullet point was put in here largely for the benefit of folks in states like Florida and California, uh, because they'll be asking the question, well, uh, I have a I'm still paying off a disaster loan from uh, Hur Hurricane Hugo, or I'm paying off a disaster loan from the uh, San Bernardino earthquake, uh, will that affect the uh, ability to get a loan under this program? And the answer is no, they won't. Uh, the people in that type of situation, and if we had had a, if Evanston had a uh, lakeshore flooding situation and you'd gotten disaster loans for some lakeshore flooding, again, that would not impair your ability to get a loan. Because the disaster program is funded disaster by disaster. Uh, this is not uh, something that is uh, uh, cumulative uh, uh, based upon the amount of money that you're being owned as opposed to the event causing the disaster. What kind of business? Steven, Steven yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. It's Paul Zalmazak. Um, I'm, I'm getting some reports that there's a little bit of difficulty with the audio. Okay. And I'm not sure if you're able to speak uh, maybe closer to the microphone. Okay, I'm, uh, well, that, I'm that's not better. That's better. Okay. Everything okay now? We'll just we'll just keep trying. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. All right. okay. 
Um, okay, on the slide I'm on now is size standards. Uh, with the uh, SBA uh, size standards, uh, as you see up there, this is the, again, the North American Industrial Classification System, which uh, develops the particular size standards that uh, uh, we will be using. A retail or service businesses between 8 million and 35 million, depending on what type of business you're in and what the situation is. Uh, construction companies, again, uh, general contractors up to uh, 39 and a half billion, but um, again, uh, they uh, would be going below that for certain other types of contractors. Uh, manufacturing uh, enterprises, again, uh, we are uh, uh, we, the manufacturing enterprises, uh, 500 would be the ceiling, and below that would be uh, a small business and wholesalers. 100% uh, of that particular uh, category, or 100 employees rather, 100 employees, and that uh, applies again for the SP size standards. And these are the same size standards that apply in the case of a uh, uh, 7A or 504 loan. Criteria for approval. Uh, again, credit history, the Small Business Administration has an in-house credit evaluation model that we use, and that would be applied to this particular program. So we definitely would look at the credit reports. Uh, there is no major uh, uh, or magic score or major consideration other than that we would take the credit report and other information and apply the standards I've got a proprietary system uh, to the uh, uh, credit report, and that would determine eligibility or not eligibility. Repayment, uh, there we would be looking at the uh, collateral listing, and we would be looking at the projections that you would be providing uh, to determine uh, the ability to repay the loan, uh, whether you have this or, or don't have it, how much. Uh, you're putting into the business, how much you're getting into the business and whatever. Uh, eligibility, uh, the business must be in the area, oops, where it is uh, uh, being used and uh, otherwise uh, it, it, uh, the losses are doing to this answer. I got the going a little bit big here. Okay. He doesn't want to move. I'll try to. Hi, Stephen. This is Luke. Maybe you want to uh, close the PowerPoint and reopen it or adjust the Zoom settings. Okay. Okay. Where is the Zoom setting on here? That's
Stephen, does it allow you to uh, uh, close the PowerPoint and then reopen it? I think it probably, I'm gonna try to, trying to do that now. Here, I can. Can we put it on my screen? There we go. Right. There we go. All right. Now we're back to it. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, okay. Ineligible businesses for the economic development uh, pro disaster program. Uh, agricultural enterprises, what we're referring to here are farms, uh, 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 programs that produce agricultural products, they are not eligible. Uh, again, gambling concerns are not eligible, and casinos uh, and racetracks are not eligible. That's, uh, that, again, they're the main types of eligible um, programs. Uh, one of the points I would re repeat what I was saying is that non for profit. Uh, institutions that provide um, services uh, of a uh, nature where they're available to the general public, uh, they are eligible uh, for support uh, under this uh, particular program. How to apply? Uh, the major, the electronic loan application, uh, I'm trying to move this over, um, the is at the SBA disaster loan. What you see the little picture up in the left hand corner is a picture of the uh, taken at the uh, room at the uh, uh, Fort Worth uh, Processing and Dispersal Office. We're asking people to please submit your applications electronically. Uh, there are a lot of folks that don't want to, they don't feel comfortable submitting electronic applications and they want to submit them by paper. Uh, you can print them uh, out and uh, do them manually if you want to. That's perfectly acceptable. Uh, but the ones that. Hey, Stephen? Uh, yeah? Stephen? Yeah? Hey, sorry to interrupt. Um, we're still not able to see the screen. It's, it's kind of distorted, and we're only seeing a portion of your screen. I don't know okay. if you can maybe hit the escape hey, key. I need my charger, please. Please. Um, the app. Okay, there we are. All right, could you see this? Um, it's still can, for me. It's not not working. Can can I can I put it on mine? Yeah, can we can we we can switch it to Katie's screen, and then maybe you can just uh, speak, and then Katie can navigate the slides. All right. Okay. Can you see it on my screen now? Yeah, All right. Okay, Katie, we can see your screen now. Can you uh, go full screen maybe? Yeah. Sorry, how do I need to? I think you're good. It's much better now for me anyway. Okay. And okay. then we need to get to Correct slide, right? Is this the right? Is this the right slide, Stephen? No, two more back. Keep going back. Going back. Keep going back. Keep going back. Back. There. Okay. All right. Oops. Now go forward. Okay. All right. Okay. This is yeah. Okay. Everybody, see it okay now and hear me okay? All right. Yes. Um, okay, good. Uh, again, uh, paper applications are also acceptable. A lot of people um, uh, can do that. Um, the address that you send them to is uh, the Processing and Disbursement Center at 14925 Kingsport Road in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, that is where you would go ahead and send them, uh, uh, send the uh, uh, applications. The one thing we beg you, we implore you, please do not bring the application forms to the SBA district office in Chicago. 
don't do it. They'll, they'll, they'll add time to it because we in the district office do not have the capacity, we don't have the staff, and we don't have the equipment necessary to process the paperwork. So either mail it to uh, Fort Worth or do it electronically, one or the other. Now, another uh, thing that uh, we want to mention, I'll add bullet point at the bottom. The SBA has the service center phone number as 800-659-2955. Uh, I know it's a little bit in the way there. Uh, and that is the uh, disaster center in Fort Worth. And if you have any questions about the program, uh, that should be the first place you should call is the uh, is the uh, disaster service center that's the 800-659-2955 and they are adding more employees there but the thing is uh, either send it in uh, one of the two ways either uh, uh, electronically or uh, by paper you can go next slide please Now the basic here we go. Basic filing requirements. Now, uh, when you go to the uh, uh, website, the first form you're going to have is the form five, and that is the loan application. Uh, you have to complete that. Uh, tax information authorization. This is a form you have to fill out, and this gives the SBA permission to contact I the IRS and get your past tax returns. And again, we also have one complete copies of the business federal tax return. Now, for those of you who filed in 19, 20, 2019, but have not done 2020, uh, uh, we don't, is, is, uh, don't worry about that, because we're looking for the 2019, and we will even take 2018 returns if you haven't done the 2019 yet. So it, it could either be uh, uh, 2018 or the 2019. Of course, 2020, you're not going to file it for a few months anyway. So that's the situation. The next form you're going to fill is the schedule of liabilities. The form 2202. This is a form where you're listing the major ongoing liabilities of the uh, uh, of the business. Uh, that you include, include that in, and then also your personal financial statement, and that will appear on a SBA form uh, 413. So this is the basic package uh, that you may need, and again. As it says at the bottom, paper applications and the forms are uh, acceptable, but filing uh, is faster and easier uh, if you file uh, by doing it electronically. Uh, next slide, please. Additional filing requirements. Uh, again, uh, I would advise you to uh, get all your financial information together, uh, get everything together, talk to your accountant, talk to your banker, talk to your lawyer, uh, get everything put together uh, before you even start the process of preparing the application. Again, uh, there's some of the other forms that may be requested. Uh, the uh, uh, we may look for schedules, we may look for more income tax returns, and the two uh, significant uh, statements that may or may not be asked for, but frankly, given the, the fact that this is an economic injury disaster program, it's almost 90% certain we're going to ask for these. It's first of all, the current year uh, to date profit and loss statement for the business, and then the Form 1368, in which you enumerate the uh, monthly sales figures. Uh, the third, again, the 1368, I, I'll put it this way. Uh, I think those two forms, uh, although they're shown here as additional requirements, 90% uh, of the uh, applications are going to have to contain those two information. As far as the personal uh, financial returns and the recent uh, uh, financial returns are concerned, uh, they will be, I think the 2017 would be the latest return that they would accept. 
Yes, please. Uh, a lot of folks say, well, what do we, if we need help uh, in getting the, the forms put together uh, and we want to talk to get some support, we have our resource network uh, that's available. Um, last Monday, uh, I was in a training program for the uh, Small Business Development Center directors um, from around the state, and they were learning about uh, how to put together an application. And uh, I'm certain that even though they're working remotely like I am, um, they uh, uh, put me in a position where they could provide help for you uh, as far as getting uh, the reconstruction of financial statements or the, uh, uh, the completion of the SBA forms. Uh, I'm going to have to talk and, on this uh, thing. The Women's Business Centers also would be uh, available and they could help you in the V-Box. If you want to find the uh, one that would be nearest where you live or work, go to the local assistance center, uh, Clint, which shown on this uh, uh, paper, and then uh, uh, go to the, go to the, uh, oops, the local, the, what happened? What happened here? Sorry. Okay. All right. Go to the uh, now we're gonna here. Yeah. Now we gotta move that two slides ahead. There, there we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, so I have to go back to one slide. I'm not finished there yet. Okay. Okay. I'll go back to the next slide before that. Okay. All right. So the the local assistance centers and uh, also what the SVA is doing, we're starting to we're continuing this probably at least through the end of the month, uh, where we will be holding two day uh, training sessions for basics on the EIDL program, and we're going to be expanding that. Uh, shortly. So the uh, local assistance will tell you the uh, what's going on there. Okay, and again, uh, if you want a list of where the next meeting is, go to the uh, uh, www.sba.gov forward slash IL. Next slide, please. Okay, tips before you submit. Again, get everything lined up. And as it says here, the biggest mistake people make is they either leave uh, uh, the uh, 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 boxes on the form blank, or they fail to include information uh, on various other forms, or, or even forget to provide things like tax returns and others. So again, be sure that you get it. Missing documentation, missing information is the biggest single hang up and problem with this particular program. Uh, as funds, it says if more fun, funds are needed, uh, you can request an increase. Uh, once the uh, form is entered, if you do it electronically, you will get a notification that the, uh, the uh, form has been put in a queue and uh, you'll be getting a, a number and then that will be what you will use when you correspond with the center from that point. And if you get uh, send it by uh, mail, you'll get a, uh, a return receipt from uh, uh, the folks in Fort Worth. Uh, the loan is denied. If it is denied, you have a six month period in which you can reconsider. There are many new reasons. Maybe there was a credit score. Uh, maybe you were not an eligible business. Maybe you didn't think of this or we don't know uh, in terms of what we're looking at. Again, you'll be in a position where you'll have to uh, uh, figure out what's going on, but you can request written reconsideration within six months of a decline. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a variation of new program that's just come on board uh, as part of our express program. Uh, some of you folks may be working with a uh, uh, bank and have an express loan or have a, one of our programs and you just need a bridge loan uh, to get you through uh, that particular area. This would be a guaranteed loan 
uh, units and the maximum of $25,000. Uh, we're in the process uh, this morning of training bankers on how to use this program. And again, it could be used uh, very similar uh, to what the, the program. Now we have the, the conditions of the express uh, bridge loan program. It's up to $25,000. You get fast turnaround, it will be repaid for the economic injury disaster loan. And again, this is available, no collateral are required. Some of the same fees that apply in an express program would apply in the uh, express bridge loan program. Next slide, please. Next slide, okay. Frequently asked questions, technical problems. Again, try deleting and reopening uh, your browser uh, load applications. Uh, again, this is uh, sometimes they're undergoing maintenance and we're having problems. The business just started and are you eligible? I would answer this as it is not a question of how long the business has been open. Uh, it's a question of are you open? Do you have sales? Do you have customers? Have you delivered a product or service? So well, that's one of the things we're going to look at. Uh, the minimum credit score, we mentioned that before, that we have this proprietary in-house system and we evaluate you according to that. And that determines whether we have an acceptable credit score. Next question. Next one, please. Uh, if you have more than one business, uh, again, uh, you would, that are located in one state, uh, you again, you would apply for the two businesses separately. And if you had two businesses, you had a business at Evanston here, let's say, and you had another business uh, over in Venosha, uh, you would have to apply uh, for the uh, Venosha business and the Evanston business separately uh, because they'd be separate legal entities. Uh, collaterals and personal, personal guarantee, yes, you are re required to uh, provide a personal guarantee. Uh, this is mandatory for the system, absolutely. Uh, lack of collateral is a reason, and again, real estate would be taken, but personal guarantee is required. Turnaround time is about a month. That's from the date that the application is approved to the date of loan closure. We have situations because we've been taking applications for a couple, three weeks now, uh, where there have been loans that have been approved, but they haven't been closed. So that's what we're going through right now. Next slide, please. The CARES Act. Now, we are involved with the CARES Act right now, uh, the uh, payroll protection plan and the uh, uh, also the uh, 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 economic uh, the small business uh, program. The situation with the, uh, the triple P program is um, this is a joint program uh, that's being run by the Department of Treasury, the Small Business Administration, and the Department of Agriculture. And when we had a, a, a overview training program this morning, uh, the regulations uh, are just being completed. We anticipate they'll start, uh, be able to start taking applications next Monday or Tuesday. And um, what is happening is that the, since it's a, uh, the way the whole program is being structured, uh, the uh, banks and the SBA's responsibility of the three agencies involved is to work with the banks so that they can take the applications and uh, work with the, the, uh, uh, bar, the uh, business to determine what uh, uh, program is necessary. The reason for the multi-agency uh, involvement is uh, because of the fact that the statute uh, uh, creating the PPP uh, allows uh, certain circumstances, non-agricultural businesses, and farming but in uh, big businesses involved and also the potential loan uh, limits exceed what is normal for the agriculture department and the uh, uh, small business administration so that's why we had to make it uh, a joint venture uh, 
uh, the the uh, big the big companies apply. Uh, they they again go through the bank, but their system of application is different. We got to work out the details of this, and all this is in, all this information is uh, uh, finalized. Uh, information will be on the MCA, SBA website. It will be on the Treasury Department website. It will be on Agriculture website. Uh, and uh, so we'll be able to give you information once everything is finalized as far as how to apply and when to apply and under what circumstances to apply. Um, it, it's, uh, as I say, I spent an hour this morning in a training program, uh, again, working with bankers, and the, the program does have certain features to it, and, but uh, uh, we have, again, we have to wait for the final regulations to be out, and, and uh, we're going to definitely make them available, and uh, when uh, training, uh, when the program is, is settled and all these decisions have been made and regulations are out there, we're going to be conducting uh, in cooperation with these other agencies, training programs, uh, both for members of the general public, as well as for uh, banks, and as well as for small business development centers and other uh, organizations that can help the uh, uh, businesses uh, get together. But this again, it's a very, a very long program, and uh, that's something we'll we'll uh, we'll definitely be getting more information on in the future. Okay, next please. Next slide. Uh, we were reminded this morning in the meeting that there is a problem with scammers. Um, they're out there already. It didn't take them long to get started. And so uh, this is why we strongly, at all three agencies, what you're looking at now, if you have any questions, if anything is suspicious about any of these programs, what you see on the slide in front of you is the contact information to find out what is going on with the program and what the status of the regulations are. And we will be getting the regulations up on all of these and the SBA disaster, uh, the coronavirus, uh, the uh, district office website. There's the information for the Illinois district office. Uh, if any of you uh, uh, right now, I've got about 30 emails that I'm waiting to go through about various questions on the loan program. And again, uh, please, uh, I know it can be frustrating and a trauma, but get a hold of us. If you have any disaster questions, all the disaster people, uh, uh, because uh, we were hearing so much, uh, that's so much erroneous information that's out there that it's, it's pathetic that it's, Thinking like this has got started that fast. So, okay, that's again, I'll like to leave that up there in case any of you want to copy any of copy that information down. And, and again, don't don't hesitate to call us uh, if you have any questions about it. So that having been said, uh, I'd like to yeah. we'll can you... the floor open for questions. If anybody has any questions or comments or anything you want to make, I'll be more than happy to entertain them. Yeah. Yeah, I can summarize some of the questions. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I know there was hey, a little... Katie. Yeah. Sorry, Katie. This is Luke. So I just wanted to mention to the audience that the slides of this presentation and the recording will be available um, right. hopefully later on this afternoon, and we will share that right. um, at Evanston Edge and a couple of other places. And I know there's a lot of questions, and Katie's going to run through some of them now. Um, any questions that we can't answer in the webinar today, we'll try to follow up with people individually as best we can. Now, this is our normal, I know, and, and as if this is our normal practice, usually with the question and answer period, we always have, uh, I haven't answered any questions. Keep in mind, you'll, you'll be getting a copy of the PowerPoint. You can read it over if you have any other questions. Okay, yeah, so we'll, we will definitely make sure to get um, the slides out as soon as possible. And again, with the questions, I will kind of summarize some of the, the main ones that I saw, but we will we'll also include that. We will communicate that out to you through um, Evanston Edge newsletter. We'll put it on our Evanston Edge website so that you guys can um, refer back to that. Um, 
Stephen, there were a lot of questions. Um, start with nonprofit organizations and what kind of guarantees and if private um, member nonprofits were eligible and if there's no owners for that um, and what they should put for that and what kind of credit score you need for nonprofits. Can you clarify a little bit for that? Okay, nonprofit organizations. Um, the the since a nonprofit organization does uh, does not have the legal status as a business is concerned, what the process is that in the standard operating procedure manual of the Small Business Administration uh, Finance Capital Access Program, there is a section. Uh, it would take me about 15, 20 minutes to go through it of developing specifically for how not-for-profits are to be handled uh, as regards the disaster program. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview of it. Basically, what the when it's a nonprofit organization, we're going to need a copy of your charter. We're going to need a copy of your bylaws. We're going to need resumes on all your officers. Uh, we're going to need um, information from the Internal Revenue Service and the State Department of uh, uh, Secretary of State's office, uh, validating that you are indeed a nonprofit entity and you've been certified as a nonprofit entity. And then we're going to have to have a business description uh, indicating that the type of services you're offering. Uh, our community services, again, using the YMCA and the training house training program. For example, that was used, the local Y, that uh, you have programs in there. And also, keep this in mind, the only uh, type of activity that uh, the loan program would be eligible for nonprofit would be to cover costs of operating the program, the service programs. I uh, like the example that I always use. Uh, uh, let's say that you have a, I know in Evanston you have quite a few of this sort of situation where churches will be running daycare centers or uh, homeless shelters or counseling centers. The church could apply and get a DIDL. They would have to go through all of this uh, business that I just described a couple minutes ago. Plus, in addition to that, we would have to show that the only money that they are asking uh, for us is to cover the expenses for running the uh, daycare center uh, or the homeless shelter or the counseling center, not to uh, recondition the pews or not to non require rooms. This is for the for the. Uh, uh, use in the in the community service, um, that uh, type of thing. But this is you have to get a complete list of all this information, and then the money that you are uh, going to be given will be just to cover those expenses for the community based service for services, and not for the total operation of the center. Okay. Um, the other. A question that we've been getting a lot of are a little more clarification with the economic injury disaster loan and the payroll protection program, just kind of the key differences between them and whether they can apply for both of the loans. Who is your renters? Who is that that you were talking about applying? Yes. Yeah, so the question is, I think, what are the key differences between the two loan programs and can they apply for both loan programs? Which mean the the, the economic uh, injury disaster loan, and then also a, apply for the payroll protection program loan. Uh, that that would be something that is a business decision. Uh, that's something that uh, they should sit down and talk to their accountant about. Absolutely, uh, uh, period. That's end of end of answer. <laughs> yeah, definitely, that's a business okay. decision. So there is, but is there any conflict with the uses between the two loans if they were applying for, you know, the same loan for the disaster losses? Well, they, they, it's it's very hard to see where they, they there would be 
uh, situation where they would be applying for both of them. Uh, that's why we're, the view is that it has to be a business decision because for example, uh, if a company exceeds the size standards, uh, why would they even uh, think of applying under the economic disaster program because they're not even a small business. And so that's why we always say that this is uh, sitting down with your accountant and your lawyer and reviewing everything and making it on a business basis uh, is the smart thing to do. Okay, can you highlight some of the key differences of why they would apply for one then versus the other program? Well, first of all, the main difference would be the type of relationship they have with the bank. Uh, they would, if they, the banker would sit down with them and uh, look over their financial situation and try to determine uh, what, which of the two programs was more appropriate. Uh, ease of application might be another consideration. Uh, a third consideration. Uh, would be the uh, nature of the damage that was done, whether it was really more uh, economic injury, disaster loan, or uh, triple P. Uh, it's, it's uh, uh, they went over uh, the, the situation. When the, whole, when the whole triple P program is out, uh, and when all the regulations are in place, I think there will be a lot of uh, material that would conceivably be available uh, that they could review that decision. But at this point in time, it's premature to look into it. And it also is a situation where ultimately it's going to be a business decision. Can you speak to a little bit of how the amount, the loan amount is determined based on and what, how they can determine whether the losses were associated with a disaster? Yes, this, as far as that, the key, the key thing, and this is what we look at, this is the, for the economic disaster, and we're anticipating with the uh, triple P that this is also going to be the most popular question. The question it is, keep in mind, we're replacing money that was lost as a result of what amounts to a national disaster. I mean, a uh, pandemic really is more of a national natural disaster than an economic one, but it does cause economic damage. So what we're going to look at is the line of business that they're in, the historical uh, profit and loss statement, the, na the nature of the marketing cycle of the business to determine what their cash to cash flow is, and all of it, the, uh, what they propose doing with the money that they get in order that it would be necessary to restore uh, restore uh, the, the business to its its uh, current or its better situation as well or better than what it was in, in future. Um, we see examples of, uh, uh, for example, uh, would the money would the money be used to uh, uh, let's say buy a new uh, building? No, it can't be uh, because that would be. Uh, that would be growing the business. Uh, could it be used for uh, uh, various types of expenses where you were expanding the business and you would have expanded it even if, it, if the, uh, the uh, pandemic hadn't occurred, uh, that type of situation. Can you talk a little bit about how long the process will take after they fill out the application? Um, how long does it normally take for them to hear back, for them to receive funding? Well, generally speaking, now that we're, we're, we're probably, uh, people are, uh, we're, we're looking at maybe about two weeks uh, to get back. We're getting a lot of the uh, glitches when the program first started, we were having a lot of computer problems, but most of those problems have been cured. And we haven't had any, heard any major stories in the last week of people having to, to wait particularly long times. So you got most of the computer system, but it's about, about a week or two. We're hiring more people uh, at, in Fort Worth uh, to do the, pre the uh, uh, so the program, we're here at the local 
uh, officers are being trained to go out and do the type of thing that I'm doing now, giving you the basic information, uh, getting you set up so that uh, you can answer and get questions about what the program is and how it works. But again, uh, the, the that's why I said earlier, we would rather have somebody call the SBA office or send an email to somebody at the SBA office uh, getting uh, a potential eligibility question settled and then get the forms together and send them down to Fort Worth. Um, for the advance loan, for the economic injury advance loan, uh, is the, the turnaround quicker than for them to just get the advance loan if they fill out the application? Well, it, it, pro it, wouldn't, it really wouldn't make that much difference. But again, the, the experience that we've been having is that people that apply electronically get a much faster turnaround than, than folks that uh, uh, apply by paper. So that, and then yeah, our well, sole proprietor, can you uh, clarify um, with sole proprietorships, are they eligible for yes, the so, so, Yes, a sole proprietorship would be eligible. Uh, that's, that's the, the point we make, this, this, we come at it from a different point of view. We say any type of business that is complied with the legal requirements. So if any business in Evanston has got an Evanston business license, operates full time. In fact, historically, in the physical disasters, more of the businesses that have applied for this have been proprietorships. Um, there's also a question, and this is something that uh, is in for discussion right now, and we should be getting a policy decision on it either on uh, the end of this week or first part of next week is the question about 1099 employees, um, how they're affected by this. Uh, one of the questions that was raised uh, in the past was uh, uh, somebody said, uh, well, I have a, a, a company and I don't, I'm the only statutory employee on the company payroll. Uh, the um, uh, other people that work for the company are all 1099s and uh, what was the, what's the condition of that? And I respond as well, from SBA's standpoint, that is a, uh, is a legal business on the one hand, but on the other hand uh, is the money that you're paying under the 1099 uh, 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 system, uh, is that actually a form of a wage or is that, uh, are the 1099 employees uh, independent business owners? But uh, Labor Department is working in on that. So, yeah, IDES is uh, uh, providing information on whether or not people are statutory employees, but that's, that's something that we're still working on. The, as to whether uh, how for the ten ninety nine whether they would be eligible for uh, this program or uh, whether they would have to go to the IDES and apply for unemployment. Okay, can you just clarify a little bit more on the hero protection program that's coming out? As far as do you know when when they can start applying at their local banks for that and maybe clarify a little bit more about yeah, the yeah, um, yeah. forgiveness portion of that loan? Well, that, those regulations at the present time are all uh, in the talking stage right now. We don't have the information on that. Okay. Um, and then no, I had please. another, Go ahead. oh, excuse me. And then for the economic injury disaster loans, um, is there any other costs that those can be used for just um, working capital, payroll, is that, what what kinds of costs can they be used for? Well, for uh, it would be payroll, buying inventory, paying your utilities, uh, making a mortgage payment on the uh, uh, building, making rent payments to the landlord. Um, uh, uh, making. Uh, 
uh, those are those pretty much are all the categories I can think of off the top of my head. But you know, inventory, if you're buying services, uh, if you're, uh, example, if you have, uh, well, if you have a uh, uh, scavenger service picking up the uh, garbage, that would be acceptable. Um, what else would be? Um, those those basically are any type of business that any type of thing that's an ongoing regular experience, expense of the business is is acceptable. Okay, and I, I do want to respect everybody's time. I know we're running over. Um, I did have a few more questions about that came in regarding the um, filing requirements for the loan that they went online and it didn't ask them for all of those documents. Will they be getting notified for that? Should they have uploaded them or what? what is the next step for that? What will happen is that they should, going back to the, the uh, uh, slide where we talked about the form five, the form 20, uh, 4506, the 1368, those slides, they should at the bare minimum send all of that in. That should okay. be in, that should be in the package, either electronically or on paper, they should send all of that in. Uh, and then if there's additional problems, um, because the point we're making is that the more they follow those uh, items, the more uh, complete it's going to be and the more uh, it'll tell us the, the application will move. Okay, um, the last question is, I just wanna clarify on the economic injury disaster loan, no portion of that is um, able to be forgiven. Is that correct? They would invest just through the payroll protection program? Right, just that, that as it stands, there is a possibility that the emergency advance will be forgiven, but that regulation is, is in, in the process right now. But yes, the answer to your question is, this is a loan. Okay, well, Stephen, I so appreciate your time. Thank you so much for um, coming in and doing this presentation. Um, thank you everybody for joining us. I, I know there was a lot of questions that came in and we did get to get to all of them. I will work on um, putting all of these um, Q&A together so that we can send out with a copy of the presentation so that we can follow up with everybody on their questions. All right, okay. thank you. Um, Stephen, on, on behalf of the city of Evanston and our, our, our businesses, thank you. Um, I um, really quickly, uh, do landlords qualify for this? Say somebody owns a, it's an LLC or somebody owns a, a, a small rental. Does, does that count? That, that is a great that, that is a, that is a a gray area question. Um, okay. The because in the standard uh, SBA seven A and five hundred four program, uh, landlords don't qualify for uh, rental property. They uh, that is not considered that's considered a passive business. In the past, uh, particularly where there was physical damage done, we did allow that. That that has been discussed. But if uh, if this had been a lakeshore flooding situation and, and a building along Sheridan Road had been flooded, let's say where the Norris Center was, let's say that was a private building and they were operating, okay. that could very well be if there was that was physical damage. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about economic. Okay. Damage. Well. we'll 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 pay attention and try to try to figure that out as well. Um, so before we leave, I wanted to connect with my uh, my Evanston business friends really briefly. Um, a quick reminder that uh, the deadline uh, there's a deadline today at five o'clock for the uh, State of Illinois Hospitality Emergency Grant Program. That is not through the SBA. Uh, that is. Uh, for restaurant, bars, and hotels, and kind of hospitality-defined businesses. So please uh, seek uh, please seek that grant out. And then there is also um, an application opening tomorrow um, for, this is from the National Restaurant Association for Restaurant Employee Relief Fund. Take a look at that and then really uh, try, to, try to get that uh, EIDL uh, loan application in. 
uh, work on getting the up to $10,000. Um, and the uh, business task force that the mayor has put together is meeting um, twice a week, and uh, the leadership on that task force meets daily multiple times. So if you have any questions um, about any of this stuff, please um, use us as a resource. Send us, send us those questions. If there are things not answered today on this webinar, send them, uh, send those questions directly to us and we'll try to answer them ourselves or uh, follow up with Mr. Conkle or his, or his team to, to get those answers to you. Um, this is just one of many ways we're going to try to communicate. Um, uh, Annie and I uh, from the Downtown Evanston Organization, Convention and Visitors Bureau, um, Maine Dempster Mile, all of the special service areas. We're planning to make many phone calls and, and, and check in um, kind of one-on-one -on -one or, or in small groups. So uh, keep a lookout for that. So I'll end, I'll end there. Luke Stowe, is there anything else we need to do from a technology standpoint? That is it, sir. Thank you. Thank you for helping set this up, by the way. Um, some unsung heroes behind the scenes that don't often get uh, the credit they deserve. So thank you, Luke and team. I want to thank all of you for inviting me. And uh, if you have any questions, we have information to help you out. Thank you.